Ellie is not at all brand new to the horror and heartbreak the world she lives in has to offer. She said herself, everyone she's ever came into contact with has either died or left her. Her best friend Riley and herself shared the horrifying experience of being bitten together. She watched her friend turn while nothing actually came for herself. Then there was the unexpected death of Tess. Ellie puts the blame on herself, since she was the sole reason Joel and Tess were even outside the quarantine zone in the first place. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't mean for this. Get a move on. Another kid around her age she met by the name of Sam was bitten as well. She witnessed him turn, and his older brother Henry having to put him down. Then not even moments later, Henry turns the gun himself and commits suicide. Ellie nearly came full circle with the fear of being left alone after Joel's impaled, but she fought the hard fight for him, doing whatever she could to the best of her ability to keep him alive, with the love she had for him and Riley's final words being a driving factor. Then there's the worst of all, David. A crazy cannibal who was going to chop her up and later on attempted to molest her, until she violently hacked away at him with a machete. All these events did in fact take a toll on Ellie, but she still found her way. We all know at this point that The Last of Us Part 2's plot is Ellie seeking revenge on those who wronged her, stopping at nothing to bring forth justice no matter the consequence. Neil Druckmann stated that this journey was more of a story focused on hate than love and shall be a much darker experience, which is a complete 180 from the story and feel we got from Part 1. We may not know exactly what event took place that pushed our beloved character mad, but what we do know is that it would have been something astronomically brutal. Today, I want to steer the focus of the conversation in another direction. When watching the current trailers of the game back, I couldn't help but notice something. Let's rewind to PSX 2016 when the world first became aware that Part 2 was reality. The first glimpse that we caught of Ellie is very heavy breathing followed by a very violent uncontrollable twitch of the hand. This is something I felt was emphasized, but as time went on, it began to feel as if it was nothing. Up until the release date reveal trailer, where we were greeted with the same heavy breathing and uncontrollable jerk yet again. You can't stop this. This has brought me to the thought that Ellie is also battling something within herself, and not just the tragic event that interrupted her life at peace. Since I feel this is something that is being put into the spotlight definitely now that it has happened twice, I want to theorize what is causing this look of Ellie losing control. I want to start by saying this could be trauma or PTSD from the event that drove her crazy. It doesn't seem far-fetched at all, especially if my theory of Ellie being sexually assaulted comes to the truth. Even if this isn't the case, this could be imagery for the rage Ellie is filled with, but it just seems to be more than that. That leaves us with the thought of Ellie's infection mutating yet again within her. As we know, cordyceps target the brain of the host and take full control, leaving the victim helpless and trapped. Cordyceps are known to develop in different stages through time, such as the runner, stalker, clicker, and the beast we like to call the bloater. Ellie surely does have cordyceps development throughout her brain, but as Marlene explained, they have somehow mutated, which is the reason why she's immune. As we know from Neil Druckmann and seen in gameplay, there are new mutations of Cordyceps. One of the new variations we got to see was the Shambler, a class of Cordyceps that resembles the look of a bloater, but instead of throwing sacks of spores to spread infection, it charges at you and emits an acidic gas that burns through flesh. Druckmann explained that all the new variations of infect that we're going to see fits into the lore of the game. In part 1, there's various amounts of documentation through collectibles about the different stages of infected we have this far. Without giving too much away, Neil states that there is something to do with the environment and how much time has passed that allow for different mutations to occur. Ellie is in fact infected. The cordyceps are well alive within her and are capable of mutating. At this point in time, Ellie has been infected for 5 years. Ellie met Joel when she was just 14 years old, 3 weeks after she was initially bitten. It's three weeks old. No, everyone turns within two days, so you stop bullshitting. It's three weeks. The course of their journey to find the fireflies throughout part one took around a year to complete. Ellie has stayed in Jackson County since the end of part one and still resides there in part two. It has been confirmed that part two takes place four years after part one, putting Ellie at the age of 19. I truly feel it would be very interesting if the demon within Ellie could start weighing in on her health, causing the erratic twitch and heavy breathing forcing Ellie to concentrate to retain control of herself. Out of all the twists and turns Part 2 has in store for us, this would be one hell of an obstacle within the main focal point of our narrative. As bad as I don't want Ellie to be in danger, I must admit that it would truly make the story that much more of an investment. I'm going into this game with the mindset of heartbreak, and I'm surely not expecting a happy ending. The Last of Us Part 2 is Night Dog's most ambitious game yet, and I am completely ready to embark the gritty world Neil has expanded upon for a second run. 
Again, Ellie's infection mutating can be something of fiction, and it can be simple as her rage, but there's just something that rubs me differently. I feel the trauma of the event, the rage fueled within her, and the possibility of a demon taking control from the inside would be another breathtaking obstacle for the long journey ahead. This is something we should pay more attention to since it has been brought to our attention more than once. Part 1 is easily my favorite game of all time, so I'm ready to see what else there will be to uncover in our 20 hour plus run of Part 2. If you guys enjoyed the video, please consider supporting me by clicking the like button and subscribing to the channel with post notifications on. I upload content regarding The Last of Us Part 2 daily whilst maintaining the quality you've come to expect. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow with another banger.